To date, Myanmar political situation remind me of Sailgu revolution. Korean people named Sailgu after the date of the revolution. It is a Korean custom to name it after a date. In the past, it follows the year, and in the present, it follows the date. At the times of the Saigu Revolution, the slogan was to die in righteousness and live in truth. Korean people have developed democracy against the dictator's regime. Let's take a look what happened that day. Why are college students in Seoul doing nothing? Many rumbled around college towns of Seoul in April 1960 when colleges were outbeat with freshmen. Back then, other regions were eventful with democratization movements and demonstrations against dictator Lee Sung Man and the Liberal Party, as well as the March 15th uprising declaiming against the fraudulent election on March 15th. Moreover, high school students had been the center of such rallies, so that people turned to the college students in Seoul asking why they remained silent. College students in Seoul had actually planned demonstrations since March but never enforced. They finally decided to execute their plan after Mr. Kim Joo-yori's body was washed ashore in Masan on April 11th, which was followed by another round of demonstration there. It was students from Korean University who made the first move. 3,000 strong students gathered in the campus at 12.50 April 18th and began marching towards the National Assembly. With some arrested, the students arrived at the building and announced a statement for the government in front of the National Assembly Building for Academic Freedom and Democracy. And they clenched their fists to disperse until all the students in custody be released. The government and the president of Korea University discussed and decided their release around 6 p.m. and the students informed voluntarily began dispersing in an orderly manner, heading back to school. At that moment, an identified armed group appeared. They were turned up to be local gangsters belonging to an anti-communist youth group. The thugs badly attacked the students with hammers, clubs and bricks, and more than 200 students were injured in less than 10 minutes. The news of the thug attack in Korean University student demonstration was reported nationwide in the next morning. People were enraged, of course. Students from a dozen of universities in Seoul got out of their campuses. Marching down the streets, they filled up main arteries of Seoul and were joined by middle and high schoolers. The number easily exceeded 100,000. The demonstrators flocked to the presidential mansion. The policemen defending the mansion launched shooting and beating. It was the beginning of Bloody Tuesday. As the students fled to death, citizens joined and fought together. On April 19, 1960, voices condemning President Lee and the Liberal Party for dictatorship and demanding to nullify the fraudulent election on March 15 and hold a new election were raised so intensely. This was the April 19th revolution. As a response to the bloody sacrifice of students, professors stood up on April 25th and read the Declaration of the Korean State of Affairs demanding to pay back for blood of the young. They also staged a rally asking for the presidential step down. With public opinion turning sour, President Lee finally announced to step down on April 26th. The April 19th revolution reinstated the basic principle of democracy. Sadly, after so much sacrifice, then all state authority shall emanate from the people. This year marks the 16th anniversary of the April 19th revolution. It could be taken as a mere history, but we were able to confirm how important the people power was in building democracy with the candlelight ritual in 2016. Certainly, we have a long way to go. With the 16th anniversary of the hard-earned revolution, why don't we think about what the so-called everyday democracy would look like and practice our own democracy in our life? <laughs>